We'll call the City Hayes Commission meeting uh, for Thursday, March 24th at 6.30 to order. First thing on the order of business, uh, I wanted to just uh, talk real quick before we get started. I uh, wanted to thank uh, Sergeant Jason uh, Bonchinski uh, with what he did last night, saving uh, saving a baby's life. I mean, that is uh, that's really, really incredible. That is a, that's why we have the... The wonderful crews that we have. I mean, it's that is a very, very, very crucial part of of the job. And I know they don't probably get a lot of thank yous. Most of them don't, and that they need to for especially for things like this. I mean, I'm I'm glad he was there to to help him out. That was wonderful. So thank you very much to him. That's very, very <laughs> don't even have words for it. Very heroic. I would agree. Yeah. Thank you, Sergeant. I appreciate your. Uh, there was the word. word. Necessary. Got the word. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I'm <laughs> terrible with words, so I, I needed that. <laughs> That's why those guys do all the training they do. Exactly, so. exactly. Chief, you and your crews, too. I mean, yeah. you guys help out with a lot of that, too. So Absolutely. Uh, thank you guys for what you do. Um, and then, Don, if you're watching, probably not. But uh, <laughs> 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 thank you guys for what you do. Appreciate it. Um, so we'll get back to the regular order business here. Uh, uh, minutes for the March 10th, 2022 meeting. Any changes, comments, or questions? No. I have none. None. They will stand as presented. <coughs> now we'll have the financial statement uh, for the month of February 2022. Mr. Rupp. Thank you. This is a report of financial summaries, revenue, and expenditures for the city of Hayes month ended February 28th, 2022. Revenues in February totaled 2991338 that's a decrease of six million three thirty two compared to the same period as last year uh, notable areas of increased revenue transient guest tax for the CVB was up 116 thousand or 44 percent golf revenue continued an increase up 25 thousand and miscellaneous revenue for new equipment reserve rose thirteen thousand eight hundred due to PD vehicles and other equipment sold on purple wave notable areas of revenue decrease Timing of receipt of property taxes leads the decrease mentioned above at 3.6 million. 2 million 225, 846 was transferred from Commission Capital Reserves to Capital Projects for the 27th Street reconstruction at this time last year. <coughs> and residential water consumption was down 3.5% and business was down 24% for a total decrease of 14%. That leads to a drop in total revenue of 10% or 47,000. Expenditures in February totaled 3,458,948. That's a decrease of 1,693,000. Notable areas of increased expenditure. Health insurance is up 220,000 as a result of the move from self insured to fully insured. Comparisons will vary every month as we now pay a premium versus actual claims. Golf course chemicals were up 15,600 as compared to this time last year. Electricity and intergovernmental was up 25,000 due simply to the timing of billing. And new equipment reserve expenditures saw an increase of 179,000 due to the purchase of a plow, a tusk screed, which I actually know what that is, <laughs> and a Kubota tractor. <laughs> Notable areas of decreased expenditures. You may have noticed the credit to capital projects expenditures in the amount of 114,870. That's for hail claims from the May 21 storm. Repairs are still ongoing and or waiting at several city properties. Other contractual was off in IT, 34,000 due to the financial software maintenance renewal at this time last year. Stormwater Reserve fell in projects, 96,000 for its contribution to the 27th Street reconstruction a year ago. And also related to 27th Water Reserve projects was down 160,000. Month to date general fund sales tax collections were at 846,477. That was another incredible increase of 133,616, or 19% as compared to last year. Year to date, general fund sales tax is at 1,581,000, up 229,000, or 17% from a year ago. The six month average is at 17.6%, which is an increase of 18% when compared to a year ago. Month to date, county sales tax collections were at 102,600, up up 16,000 or 18 percent. And year to date, county sales tax is at 191,563. The report of top 10 quarter to date sales tax collections by classification was up 421,000 or 19 percent. The largest 
percentage increases were in electronic shopping at 142 percent, accommodation at 85 percent, and restaurants at 24 percent. These top 10 represent 73 percent of the total sales tax collections from the warning quarter. And we have been doing this report since 2011, and never have I had a report where all of the categories had an increase. I've always had at least one category that had a, a trending negative. This is the first report where we've wow. had all, all of them positive trends. Oh. Yeah. Just a little tidbit there. Re real interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Portfolio certificates of deposit on February 28th totaled 10 million with a weighted average interest rate of five basis points, down 28 basis points from a year ago. Total par value of the U.S. Treasuries is 53,454,000 weighted with a weighted average yield to maturity of 38 basis points. Total balance of the money market account on February 28th was three and a half million with a current yield of five basis points and total investments are up 9.4 million. Make a motion to approve the February finance report. Second. <clears throat> we have a motion by Commissioner Musil, second by Commissioner Barrett to accept the financial statement. Any questions or comments for Kim? Kim, I just have a question. Um, I know our sales tax are up and uh, is there any way to tell uh, this question uh, with their prices going up how to tell what that percent is of the overall increase or is that even possible to uh, we could it? we could maybe do some look at inflation and, and apply that because mm -hmm. but the problem with that is you can't factor in how much of that is really just increased shopping and right I know that's uh, why locally and I mean you could apply that I guess but uh, I think we'd still be off. I think it's a lot of little, a lot of, maybe not necessarily little things, but a lot of things that have, that, that has contributed to those increases. I'll mean, be inflation, though, is the big. Yeah, we got to be grateful. It's <laughs> a great run, that's for sure. I suppose if you, next year at this time, you can show 18% growth compared to this year. Now that will be something. Yeah, that'll be a trick. <laughs> that'll be a trick. I would also say that the one place where I think we're probably all happy that we decreased our re revenues was the fact that water use was down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so or as dry as it is also. So that, that's actually a very good thing. Yes, it is. Speaking of that, and this, I don't, this probably isn't the spot, but I was listening on the radio that we're number one in Kansas in terms of usage per capita. I would like to know where we rank in the whole United States. I'll bet you we're still close to the top. I'll bet Jeff Crispin can I bet get Jeff can do anything. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> I'll bet you we'll be very, very close to the top. And it's something to be extremely <laughs> proud of. I mean, the, the, the resource that we are conserving is just unbelievable. I know at one time I, I did some big cities um, like Las Vegas and Tucson and mm -hmm. um, a few other desert cities like that, and we were better than them. Right. They were up in the 130 to 140 gallon per capita per day range. Well, when we were in Austin at that meeting, we were, I mean, everybody around us was – smiling and yeah. saying, how do you do what do you, you do? do? So right. um, I'd, it'd be interesting to find out, Jeff. Thank Our you. citizens are better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Toby. On the 27th Street, I know we have that uh, capital reserves. I know it's getting ready to start back up. Mm -hmm. Do we have a end time of that now? I mean, an updated uh, completion date? Um, Jesse, are you aware? I, John gave an expected. They're expecting about six weeks. Oh, wait. Okay. 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 Any additional questions or comments? If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes 5 0. Next up, citizen comments from non VIPs. <laughs> no? Okay. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Next up, we have the consent agenda, the mayoral appointment for approval for care council. Um, again, this was kind of brought up to you guys back in March. Um, was it March 10th? I think it was. Um, I spoke with Brett Gerber about his uh, potential appointment for care council. He's very excited to uh, to get started if we let him. So I think it'd be uh, I think it'd be beneficial for us to approve this. I move approval of the consent agenda. Seconded. We have a commissioner by. Uh, <clears throat> we have a motion by Commissioner <laughs> Jacobs. A second by Commissioner Burgess. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Passes 5-0. Next, the 2022 Street Maintenance Program Award a Bid for Extra Work. Jesse Rohr. Good evening. Jesse Rohr, Director of Public Works. So about a month ago, or a little over a month ago, I think it was February 10th, I came to you with a request for award of bids for several 
2022 street maintenance projects. After award of those particular bids, nearly 300,000 remained in unencumbered budgeted funds for some additional projects. Since that time, we've now received for, we've put out and received bids for additional projects, and that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. So first, I'll do a quick recap of the total budgeted funds and <coughs> bids already awarded. So in 2022, there was just a little bit over $1 million budgeted for street maintenance out of the Special Highway Fund. The breakdown of fund sources, you can see listed on your screen. This map shows the locations of the various projects that we already awarded for your direction back on February 10th of this year. You can see there's five main projects, a seal coat in various areas around town, major street rehab, which was reconstructing 22nd Street between Vine and Allen. We had two concrete alleys downtown to reconstruct, <coughs> three bridge decks to redo uh, concrete on, and then one area of sidewalk on Mopar Drive just west of Vine, south of Applebee's. And this shows a breakdown of those various projects I just mentioned that were awarded in February and the total cost of those projects. As you can see at the very bottom, there's just over 281,000 remaining. So therefore, we put out some additional projects so we could spend that money that's within the budget. This slide shows two additional projects that were solicited for bids. The two main projects were up in the upper left, you see the green line there, that's a sidewalk project. And then we had a brick repair project in several areas, and I'll give a little more details about those projects in just a moment. So first, a quick note about the bids. On March 1st, we did receive bids from three different contractors that bid on the two different projects. I do want to mention that the brick repair, well, although it was considered one project, there's primarily six locations within that, that single project. The bid documents were structured such so that contractors could bid on one or more of the various projects. So now a little bit about each of the two projects. So you can see a couple of examples of some of the brick repairs that we'll be doing. And I'll show you those locations here in a second. Um, the brick project kind of consists of, mostly consists of three various areas. We have the West 16th, <laughs> The 300 block of West 16th. We have um, a pretty large area, several different smaller areas between uh, Fort and Ash and 7th and 12th, that circle there, the bigger cloud there. And then we have a stretch of brick to redo in the 300 block of East 11th. So those are all the kind of the reddish colored uh, lines there. For this one, J Corp was a little better at $243,760.50. <coughs> The sidewalk project was structured such, in such a way that it will uh, result in an eight-foot wide multi-use path along the north side of West 27th Street between Thunderbird and Inglewood. On the bottom of the screen here, you can see uh, that's 27th Street run parallel with the screen. On the left over here is Thunderbird, Inglewood over on the right. And so you can see it'll be placed on the north side um, upon existing city right away. J Corp was also the low bidder of this project at a bid of $56,026.65. So before I showed you a table that had all the projects that were bid back on February 10th and awarded on February 10th. So here's kind of a continuation of that table. And as you can see, uh, by adding these two projects, we have approximately just over $31,000 remaining in the contingency fund to a special highway. Uh, we'll hold on to that $31,000 plus for any unforeseen circumstances. We don't expect any, usually don't have any, but um, if something comes up, we have that to cover any of those expenses. These would be your options tonight and the action requested on these two projects. Any questions? I move we authorize the city manager to enter contracts for construction as follows. J Corp in the amount of $56,026.65 for sidewalk along West 27th Street. J Corp in the amount of $243,760.50 for curb and brick repair, all to be funded out of Special Highway. Second. Motion by Commissioner Jacob, second by Commissioner Musil. Any questions or comments for Jesse? 
I like the project. Jesse, on that, uh, when you go back, I don't know if you can go back to the brick repair where the CMA looks like it's just really beat up. Is that from the ice? Uh, yeah, right there. What is that from? Uh, which picture are you looking at? On the, the right. The picture on the right? Yeah. Um, so there's there's some older, so the the concrete that runs down the street there, that was put in decades ago. There's actually, I believe this one is a, a um, AT&T trunk line that runs down through there. Okay. And at that time, as was common, they replaced it with concrete instead of brick. Uh, that's no longer a practice of ours or any utility companies. It's no longer allowed. So if that would happen today, it would be replaced with, with brick. Um, so that concrete just, like I say, it's been there for decades. And it's just general deterioration. So that there, that that's not all being replaced. We're just doing the corner, am I right? No, there's several stretches where we're doing. Um, there's some areas where we're doing actually doing the, some of those areas that okay. that run parallel to the street there. Those concrete, not all of them. There's several of them. We'll catch some in in later years as well. <laughs> so it's just age, basically, is why it's like. Yes, that. correct. Okay. If there's no other questions or comments. We'll call for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 <coughs> Passes 5-0. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. <coughs> Next up, sanitary sewer point repairs award a bid. Mr. Good evening, Commissioners. Jeff Crispin, Director of Water Resources. <coughs> there, are sev there are several areas of the city of Hayes uh, where sanitary sewer lines have needed repair uh, because of cracks, holes, offset joints. Um, city staff solicited bids to perform spot repair of the sanitary sewer system uh, through both internal patches and dig and replace methods. Kind of seems like all I do is talk about sewer when I come here, so but that's all right. Um, this is the visual of the 2022 uh, repair location. 39 separate locations were identified through previous sewer line cleaning and CCTV inspections. 15 of these locations, which are in green, are ones that would be dig up and replace. Uh, 20 of the locations, which are seen in blue on the map, are um, the ones that would be internal patches, similar to when we do the lining from manhole to manhole. They can go in and they can place a patch. I kind of like to refer it as a Band-Aid, but uh, it's a patch with the inside. And there's four locations that could be either a dig and replace or a patch. And when the contractor's on site, they can take a look at those and, and make a determination of what the, might be the best method. And one thing that I think is important to point out, and we'll get, we'll see this a little bit on a different visual, you can see that all these locations are closer to 27th Street and over here by Vine, with the exception of some of them that are also up to the north as far as this uh, work area. This is a list of our project history. I won't go through every line, but in 2018 we did 30 point repairs, or the contractor did. 2019 we did our lining. Um, a 15,000 linear feet, and that's when you go from one manhole to the other manhole. Uh, 2020, we did point repairs again, 31 point repairs completed. 2021, we did 10,000 linear foot of uh, CIPP lining. And then this year, our goal is to do uh, 39 point repairs uh, for 2022. So uh, this is a little bit of a history. I know this is a little bit hard to read, but another map, as you can see, 27th Street there, Vine Street here. And all the areas that um, we've done in the past are a little bit south of the new location that we're going to be working in in 2022. Um, I'll, I'll do that again. Basically, you can see um, we, I have it broke down by year uh, lining, and we did a lot, small lining project on Main Street in 2015. Uh, the blue dots are 2018 point repairs. Uh, the gold lining project in 2019, 2020, we did point repairs. Um, that's a circle and then another lining project. I know it's pretty busy, but it's a lot of work that's been done to our sanitary sewer system, and we're pretty happy with that. So that's what's been completed over the last uh, four years. That represents 61 point repairs and 20, 25,000 linear foot of sanitary sewer that's been lined. Total funds expended over the last four years have been just under a million dollars of repairs to our sanitary sewer system. Uh, these are just some examples that I tend to show every um, every presentation. This is something that we fixed in the past, but it's called an offset joint. Basically, when you have two pipes that have come together and it, where they come together and meet, something's happened where the ground has shifted or something's failed and it's offset, so we have to get in there, and that would be a candidate to dig and replace. This visual and the next two visuals are basically screenshots based off a of video that we have in-house. Uh, this is another one. 
It's a little bit tilted, but um, you can see some soil and roots visible on the right side of that video. That's another one that would be a likely dig and replace um, type repair. And then this third one has a few cracks on the right side of the screen, um, looking down through there. And in this situation, they could probably do a patch of those cracks. We don't necessarily have to completely dig that one up and replace it. So these are some of the old uh, shots that we, we typically use when we are doing our presentations. Uh, bids were opened on February 22nd, and we had two bidders that basically um, submitted for this project, Utility Solutions and M&D of Hayes. All bids were reviewed by city staff. The low bid of Utility Solutions um, has been determined to be the valid low bidder. We've worked with them before. Uh, due to the low amount that we got on this bid of $200,404.60, uh, project manager John, he reached out to Utility Solutions and inquired if they would be interested in performing uh, 15 additional locations at the unit cost that they basically bid out for our project and they said that they would. So we always want to make sure that we have some things in the background that we might be able to add into the project um, and we had those ready to go at the time. So they have agreed that they would be able to do that up to the budget if you do approve that tonight. And like I said, they've accepted the, the work to do that uh, additional 15 spots. So a little busy on this screen, but for the financial part of this, we budgeted 300,000 uh, for 2022 uh, to be funded out of water reclamation reserves. The bid of 200,460 was based on and was based on their unit prices. We identified 15 other locations. They've agreed to go ahead and repair those while they are here um, for a budget not to exceed $300,000. So we are proposing entering into a contract with Utility Solutions not to exceed that amount for those additional repairs as well. So tonight you have three options. Uh, enter a contract not to exceed 300,000 with Utility Solutions, uh, direct us to another option or do nothing. And this is the action I would request. I'll move to authorize the city manager to enter a contract with Utility Solutions in an amount not to exceed 300,000 for sanitary sewer point repairs to be funded from water reclamation reserves. Second. We have motion by Commissioner Burgess, second by Commissioner Jacobs. Any questions or comments for uh, Jeff? Jeff, I just appreciate you getting them to do the extra work while they're here. I know we've talked about that in the last few years, and I think you've done a good job of that. So thank yep. you. Appreciate thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Glad you guys are being proactive <coughs> instead of reactive. Yep. yep. I'm just excited about how you can keep all our sewers sanitary. <laughs> <laughs> we do our best. <laughs> Stinky job, but you get it done. Thank you. <laughs> all right. If not, I'll call for a vote. <laughs> all in favor, say aye. 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 Passes 5 0. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Smells better. <laughs> Next, we have the self contained breathing apparatus SCBA equipment award of bid. Chief. Good evening, Commissioners. Ryan Hagen's Fire Chief. I was going to talk about the self contained breathing apparatus award of bid. We purchased our uh, current fleet of SCBAs back in 2008, and they are becoming parts obsolete and not meeting up to today's recommended safety standards. Uh, for 2022, we budgeted $300,000 for this purchase. These pictures uh, represent what the proposed air packs would look like. Uh, we received one bid uh, from Conrad Fire Equipment out of Olathe for $262,022.53. Uh, options is authorize the purchase of that equipment and that amount, reject a bid or direct me for otherwise. And this is the action that I'm requesting this evening. I move, questions? Yeah. I move to approve the bid from Conrad Fire Equipment for an amount of $262,022.53 for the replacement of SCBA equipment to be funded from the fire department's portion of the public safety new equipment reserve fund. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bar uh, Barrick, second by Commissioner Musil. Any other questions or comments? What do we do with the, the old ones? We will probably sell them on Purple Way. So we're getting 30 of them. I mean, how many officer uh, firefighters uh, we do have, we have? Or? We have 21 career, two volunteers, and then we always keep some in spare. Yeah, nice. yeah, spare. So, uh, do we have anything that what makes them be able to be underwater, too, because then they could be scuba. <laughs> <laughs> A lot more money. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate you keeping our uh, fire department safe. Really do. Thank you. 
there's no other questions, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Passes 5-0. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right. East Frontier Park parking lot award of bid. Our favorite parks director. Speaking of underwater. Because <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Jeff Boyle, Director of Parks, and I am here to talk about parking lot upgrades for East Frontier Park. Um, so the uh, red outlined area is where the parking lot uh, currently exists. It's basically rock and mud, and every time it rains, we, we have a uh, kind of a mud run through there where everybody's parking and rutting things up. And, and uh, the yellow line indicates a uh, drainage line that would um, be underneath our new parking lot I'm requesting tonight. Um, that would drain all the water to the lower area uh, of the park and uh, get it away from that location. This is a picture uh, after a rain event. Um, and there is some standing water around the shelter. Staff does intend to take care of that uh, in-house uh, by putting concrete around that shelter, uh, for sure on the east and south sides. Um, the north side and the west side are not typically a problem, but uh, during a torrential rainfall, it could be, but, but generally it's the uh, east and, and south side that are the problems. This is an overlay kind of showing where the parking lot would sit. Um, the parking lot would be tapered in a way where the center of the parking lot is the lowest point. So whatever does get on the parking lot or come off the roadway would head to that lowest point, which is where the drains would be. So... Uh, we sent it out, put it on the website, sent out uh, request for bids. We got one bid from J Corporation for $26,700. We have $40,000 budgeted for this project in the special park and recreation budget. So you can see that we're $13,300 under budget, which is always a good thing. These are the options that you have this evening. And this is the action that I would be requesting for the project. Make a motion to approve the low bid from J Corp for the amount of twenty six thousand seven hundred from the special parks and recreation budget for the installation of the new parking lot in East Frontier Park. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Burgess or Commissioner Musel, second by Commissioner Burgess. Um, any questions or comments? What's you know, the actual size of the parking lot? It's hundred and sixty foot long, twenty foot wide. Mayor, I just wanted to commend all the department heads out here tonight. You look at everything, we're, you know, we're spending a lot of money, but it's on maintenance and safety. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got the money to do it. So you guys are thinking not only for today, next year. And, you know, if we have a year where we have a downturn in sales tax, we could actually pause. And I think, Toby, we would be okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just nice to be part of that. And thank you guys for what you guys do for us. Thank you. Appreciate and it. We've had to do that before. Under budget. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Thank, Thank you. you very much. That's going to be a great. Uh, so why is, I mean, I've been down there for years. And I love going down to that park. But it didn't seem like it used to have such a the drainage there. We never had a parking lot. We tried to build this parking lot because we had a lot of folks asking, why don't you pick an area where we can pull off the roadway to park for our parties? And uh, so we kind of excavated the area and then laid rock in, kept it at the, the grade it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, it, it backs up. It's flat as a pancake through there. Yeah. And it backs up against that roadway. And right. and uh, so it wasn't a problem in the past because nobody was driving off into the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but now that we actually made a parking lot there, it, it changed things. I'm amazed. You go down there around noon, how many people are just on oh, yeah. lunch break, you know, pulled off. And, and summertime, it's just beautiful down there. So. Right. And I did fail to mention it's six-inch concrete. So when we have the large trucks that come in yeah. for the various... Uh, gatherings that we have down there, uh, the concrete will be safe with that thickness. So, and you said staff in house will kind of work on the area around the yes the shelter house. Yes. Good. Awesome. Okay. No other questions or comments. A call for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Passes five zero. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you very much. All right. Amendment to development agreement between the city of Hayes and Mall Hayes Mall LLC. <coughs> Toby. Toby Doherty, city manager. The commission is in receipt of a request by the owner of the Hayes Mall to modify a development agreement that was adopted in 2014 when the original CID was created. Um, the CID was created, it's a one cent uh, added sales tax for up to 22 years, and it allows the property owner to um, 
to be eligible to re- be reimbursed for up to $3.1 million in eligible cost. Um, the improvements were broken out into phase one and phase two, and they included uh, lightings, HVAC upgrades, flooring, um, parking lot sign, demolition of the old Montana mics, um, several various uh, components of it. And again, phase one and phase two improvements, each with ha- that had a deadline for them. I believe the phase one improvements were July 31st of 2016, and phase two was December 31st of 2016. So the developer did everything um, except for one thing in phase two and is being reimbursed for that. So they've cert- certified 2 million of the 3.1 to be reimbursed, and they have been reimbursed 1.3 million of that too. So this is a page from the original development agreement and um, I provided you a hard copy of this last week. And so the property owner has completed everything except this $1 million line item here for interior renovation slash finish. So this was something they anticipated needing to accommodate a large retailer. At the time the development agreement was <coughs> contemplated, they were looking at a, a major renovation to the south end of the mall. Um, because at that time, the north end of the mall contained an operating department store. Um, the south end of the malls where the vacancies were at. Well, since that time, the vacancies have been filled in the south end of the mall. Now there's a vacancy at the north end of the mall that is being um, renovated to uh, accommodate a retailer called Ollie's Bargain Outlet. So the city commission's ask for, asking for an admission to the development agreement, an addendum, that would allow this $1 million to be eligible. Um, so it doesn't affect the terms of the CID. It does not affect how much more they can be reimbursed outside of the development agreement. It simply makes that $1 million eligible. Um, the expenditures would have to uh, meet the terms of the development agreement and our CID policy. They would be uh, certified by the finance director and our bond council to make sure they are eligible expenditures, but they are um, interior innovations and parking lot improvements. Um, I think they're doing something on the exterior and then HVAC replacements. Um, the, develop, the owner is asking for an 18-month extension from the time this would be approved, the commission approves it, and that is due to HVAC supply chain issues. Um, they intend to do the improvements as quickly as possible, and I think if you know, they're actually doing them right now. Um, so they intend, intend to do it as quickly as possible, but they would like 18 months just in case they have some issues with with some of their HVAC supply chain issues. So the city commission has the following options. And again, this does not modify the terms or the actual district itself. It just allows that one portion of the development agreement to be eligible for expenditures. And so this would be the action we would request and I would stand for any questions. I move approval of resolution number 2022-007, modifying the CID development agreement between the City of Hayes and the Hayes Mall, LLC. Second. Motion by Commissioner Jacobs, second by Commissioner Burgess. Any other questions or comments? So originally, they weren't going to spend that money on the, on the <coughs> north end. No, uh, there was a Klein's department store was on the north end. Um, the vacancies they had at the south end was the, the Midwest Drug, and then the area where the... Um, um, Dollar Tree and Harbor Freight is. Um, and so that's what they were looking to renovate for the, what's it? I'm sorry. There you go. <laughs> um, I should have known that. I had a credit card. Uh, but they, um, um, so they were looking at, at, at converting all of that space to accommodate a new retailer. Um, they've got a lot of that space filled now, and so this is their largest space that needs remodeled since it was vacated by, by Gordman's. So they didn't spend the money renovating the south end? No. No, none of that line item was, was tabbed. All of the other line items were, were executed, tabbed, and they're being reimbursed for them. That line item was not addressed at all. Are there going to be other spaces that are going to come back and ask for this for, like the, the big space that used to be the, in the center of the mall? Is the, oh, uh, not under problem. this agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if, if the commission approves this, this would – this would totally enact this agreement. So they couldn't come back and ask for um, a modification because this improvement's already taking place. They've already, they've already got costs they're, they're incurring to be certified. So um, 
they couldn't come back and then ask for something else. They would have to ask for a new CID if they wanted to do something. The ironic thing is the dollars are projecting on all these is bigger than what the business they believe was going to come in there originally. It, it's either bigger or roughly the or same. Roughly the same, yeah. Mm -hmm. I made comments last week, and I, I haven't changed my thinking about it. I'm in favor of this. Um, you know, I'd, all of us would like to see more improvements out there. I, I'd love to see the parking lot be all the way around, just like they put in front of Ollie's. I think Ollie's is going to be a great addition to the mall. Mm -hmm. I think it's another kind of the trend that seems to be happening, and that's a kind of a discount mall. And there's certainly a demographic from all over northwest Kansas, not just Hayes, for that. But if you take some time, which I did since the last meeting, and really walk through the inside of the mall, looked at the businesses that are in there, how many people in a certain number of those businesses, we're taking care of a bunch of people. And I think Ollie's is going to bring a lot more in. It's not costing us a dime. If somebody goes and wants to shop there and pay that extra, that's, that's the choice they make. It's not costing the city anything. I, as I said last week, the worst thing that could possibly happen to us is that mall sit there empty, especially in that location on Vine. So for all those reasons, uh, I'm in favor of this. Yeah. And I, I don't disagree with you, Sandy. I, um, you know, I guess for me, you know, I'm the only commissioner up here that, you know, dealt with these guys and, uh, it's just, I, I just can't say, you're right, it's not going to hurt us a bit if we pass this, but, you know, it just, you know, we, we dealt with these guys about, you know, local contractors, and, and I reached out to you, Toby, I had a few reach out to this week on just how difficult they will, you know, we'd said we wanted you to use local contractors, and they're very difficult to deal with, and I just feel like they've done the bare minimum, and it's just frustrating, but they also bring, I mean, we're getting sales tax dollars from that mall, and that's what we live on here, it's just, uh, you know, and the, the goal was to keep that mall open, and the malls throughout the nation are, I mean, we're lucky to be alive anymore. So it's, I'm glad it's still there. I just, uh, for me, it's just too much baggage behind the scenes with these guys that I can't see myself voting for it. But I understand why you guys will vote for it. I don't know much. I don't really have much comments. I think I'm in line with like what Sandy says. It's mm -hmm. the people that have the most to lose are, are the tenants in the mall itself. Right. Yeah. Um, by not having this extended um, again for the misunderstanding of what a CID is it's simply just a collection mechanism for the business they could use other collection mechanisms like a bank or something like that but this is the source that they're using is just so again I mean the financial considerations right there in black and white there is no direct financial impact to the city or the taxpayers um, they're collecting that one cent off their own uh, um, shoppers so again if this is something that you don't like, um, then don't shop there. Um, but I, in a way, I there's some frustration. You know, I can voice my frustration with the mall and what they do. But when it boils down to a vote, vote you got to say yes or no. You can't really say. I'd like to say like 75 percent of my vote is yes, 25 percent of my vote is no. But um, so you kind of have to distill it down to yes, you know, one way or the other. So I could certainly. Um, I, there are some frustrations with the mall, so there, that can't be unsaid but. but to be fair everything they're doing is not going to to the current mall this is just the extension right yes this is this is just improvements to sure. accommodate the ollie's bargain ollie's, outlet right. and one thing that was talked about last week i know sean brought up that he was part of this when when this thing was considered um this is our only cid for an existing business not a new business being created um and so I think we learned a few things with it to where if we do have another similar situation, we now know what questions to ask and maybe what things to ask for that we didn't at the time. So we took a lot of stuff on faith and didn't get it in writing. And we, we can probably do a lot better when this, now, this similar situation happens. That would be my hope because I can see this happening again. I think there's things mm -hmm. that, you know, not to, you don't want to make it more staff um, work, but I think there's some stuff we can get in writing. You know, like when they said parking lot improvement, didn't technically say you had to do all the parking lot, we just said parking lot improvements. Well, they did some improvements, but very half. And all that is shame on us. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's the way we outlined and we allowed it to happen. Yep. You know, I didn't hear from one merchant that's in the mall. And I would think if there was going to be anybody objecting to this very openly, it would yeah, be the merchants yeah, that are allowed to have that. I didn't hear from anybody. Well, it actually helps them. The more, sure the more traffic is Sure it does. Them. No, I, I agree with I agree with what you guys are saying. Um, I tend to lean more with Michael and Sandy. Um, I don't disagree with you, Sean. Um, I can understand your frustrations. We obviously hadn't been through that as 
detailed as you, but yeah, I think I think we all understand we'd rather do something, especially if it doesn't really, I guess, financially impact the city as much as anything. Um, I'd rather just let it let it continue and potentially drive that extra traffic to those other merchants in the mall. Um, I don't want to hurt them because of kind of bad feelings towards how yeah. things have been handled in the past. That has nothing to do with the businesses. It's right, right, right. So that's, that's kind of where I stand, too. So I guess uh, any other questions or comments? I, I guess I, I have a tough one with it. I get exactly what you guys are saying. and Nobody wants to hurt the businesses that are there. But those businesses would have been helped if the owners had done their due diligence and gotten some other businesses in there and taken care of the mall would have helped everybody out. And it feels like they've avoided putting their own skin in the game. And I would kind of like to see them put their skin in the game. And to, I think to make to make the mall a better place for the tenants that are in there and for the people that are shopping. But I think that's where we learned we should have maybe reworded our development agreement. I mean, this is the first time. So we maybe made some mistakes that we need to do better next time, if there is a next time. Yeah, and obviously malls around the country are a, an extremely uh, interesting animal um, just to see how they're all how they're all doing from from ours all the way to Oak Park in Kansas City. I mean, you can everywhere, see everywhere. But the cycle is gone away from malls. It goes it cycles to malls and away from malls yeah. to downtown. Yeah, so it's it's definitely been a shift. So downtown. developers are going to do what we ask them to do and we insist that they do. I was a banker for a long time and did a lot of development and I'm telling you They'll do whatever they can get away with. Yep. And if we've allowed them to get away with that, shame on us. Yep. Uh, and going forward, I don't think we'll do that. Again. We can only learn and plan. No, that's learn. right. Learn and plan. <laughs> yep, that's right. All right. If there's no other comments, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Passes 4 1. Thank you, Toby. Thank you, Toby. Okay, next up, progress report. <laughs> Good evening, Colin Belzer, Assistant City Manager. Well, we have progress. And for yeah. we always, always have always progress. have progress. Paul and there's always. <laughs> um, so in Pablo Works, uh, they repaired the intersection of 22nd and Eisenhower. Some of the concrete deterioration. They also did curb and brick work on West 15th Street, so you can kind of see it before, during, and then after. Service Division also reconstructed a storm drainage basin on General Custer near the Fire Department training facility. And Stormwater Division has begun removing the old peeling paint on the on the bridges, the murals. So we're gonna repaint that, right? Excuse me. We're gonna repaint that. Yes, concrete color. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Fire Department has been doing flow <laughs> testing. Uh, they started uh, this month. Uh, just so you know, there's over 1,100 fire hydrants in the city. I know. <laughs> Park staff uh, assembled and installed new dining tables and chairs for the golf courses pro shop. The installation of the artificial turf has been completed at each quadruplex. They're now uh, working on dirt work and to install drainage outlets. Once the dirt work along the infield is complete, sod is laid. And then that actually has to be hand irrigated or hand watered. Park staff have been cutting back ornamental grass plantings in parks and green spaces throughout town. Here they are on Vine, obviously. And then once those have been cut back, park staff add fresh layer of mulch. The infields at Obel Bickle and Glassman ball fields were laser graded for playability and proper drainage. They look great. On May 6th, the Hayes Police Department awarded the AAA Community Traffic Safety Silver Award. Uh, for the efforts to keep accidents uh, and down and uh, street safe. On March 11th, Commissioner Barrick, uh, Jeff Crispin, and myself took a tour of the R9 Ranch. Uh, the picture on the left is obviously of that blowout. As you know, about 99% of the ranch is vegetation. It's just this one area. And from uh, coming from northwest Kansas, it's amazing to that soil is sandy like that. Mm -hmm. I did learn about kangaroo mice there while we were on top of the uh, <laughs> on top of the, the sand. I was told mice. Mice? I think. 
Maybe it was rats. We were telling stories again, okay. Commissioner. It was kangaroo rodent. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Uh, 4-H water ambassador training is going underway, so they've been analyzing water samplings or l learning how to do that, uh, learning about the benefits of wetlands, um, and then going over the incredible water journey activity. On March 17th was the World Water Day Fun Fest. Here you can see, obviously, Jeff Crispin and Wally um, demonstrating what we do here in Hayes. Stormwater Superintendent Joe Billinger is talking with uh, Citizen Ron Mellick about <laughs> stormwater. <laughs> and then Steve Schmidtberger with uh, the senior plant operators getting ready to educate people on shower heads. Uh, <clears throat> CVB sponsored meal for 65 coaches, judges, and volunteers for the Heartland Gymnastics meet. They also provided 360 welcome bags. At Special Olympics, they help coordinate uh, matching local sponsors with the businesses to match the teams and then volunteered at the event themselves. Brandon Cooley, the marketing manager for CVB, provided Hayes photos to Qdoba for a mural that they're doing. He also provided photos to Tommy's Car Wash for a mur mural that they'll have. The CVB provided approximately 1,000 welcome bags in the group of, or in the month of March. Project management has services. A uh, subcontractor for Morgan Brothers has completed the installation of water infrastructure for Kingsgate Second Edition. They're now working on storm sewer and road grading. And then 24th and Walnut water line improvements. This was completed by J Corp. It involved uh, transferring services from an old four inch line to an eight inch line. And you can kind of see the deterioration or the buildup that happens in those four inch lines. So much better water uh, pressure there. North Vine Street continues to receive awards. The project received the Excellence in Paving Award from the Missouri Kansas chapter of the American Concrete Pavement Association. And the project received the Outstanding Engineering Achievement Award from the Kansas Society of Professional Engineers. Any questions? Um, I guess for Jeff, when is the first official game out there? Is there any way if you get feedback that you could give us just feedback on what people think of it? And then I just be curious. I'd like to possibly go out there and watch it a little bit. I love progress. Thanks. Makes me feel good. I like happenings too. Yeah, Ace happenings with Colin. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's me tonight. So again, <laughs> Colin Belzer, City Manager for Hayes Happenings. Uh, April second will be the I think the last Hayes Chamber Legislative Coffee at eight a.m. at the Public Library. The RPM Speedway races they're scheduled for April second, the fifteenth and sixteenth, and the thirtieth. The Wonder Woman Women League Power of the Purse event will be April 7th, 6 p.m. at the Hilton Garden Inn and Convention Center. The third annual Special Needs Egg Hunt will be April 9th, 11 a.m. at the Ark Park. The U-Triple-S-A Eagle Baseball Classic will be held April 9th through 10th, uh, beginning at 9 a.m. at the Bickle Schmidt Sports Complex. An opportunity to get out there and hear what people are saying about the turf. Obviously, we have our ribbon cutting for the turf project April 12th at 10 a.m. We all get a random slide on it. You're more than welcome to. <laughs> I don't slide very well. Right, Sandy. Do we have an ambulance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the 56th annual uh, Fort Hay State NIRA rodeo will be happening April 15th through 17th. The 48th Annual Kiwanis Easter Egg Hunt will be held at the Fort Hay State Quad, April 16th at 9 a.m. Sternberg Museum will host an Easter scavenger hunt on April 16th, 10 a.m. to noon. The Fort Hay State University Encore Series will present the Queen's Cartoonist on April 21st at 7.30 p.m. The 8th Annual Hayes Toy Show will be April 23rd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Rose Garden Banquet Hall. And again, the Fort Hayes State University Encore Series will present Anne of Green Gables, the ballet, on April 29th at 7.30 p.m. 
the Hayes Community Theater will be doing a Radical Midsummer Night's Dream on April 29th and 30th at 7.30 p.m. at the Hayes Community Theater. And there is an art walk coming up on April 30th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in downtown Hayes. And then there's the U-Triple-S-A Western Kansas May Mayhem at the end of the month at Bickle Schmidt Sports Complex. There we go. Lots of good happenings. Lots to do. Any questions or comments for Colin? Good stuff. Anybody that says there's nothing to do in this community needs to sit through one of these presentations. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa, preferably, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Appreciate it. Commission inquiries and comments. Commissioner Burke. I like Hayes happenings with Colin. <laughs> um, I, it's an exciting time of year because lots of things are going, there's always things going on, but it's, this is a fun time of year to have lots of things happening and um, it's fun to be a Hayesian. Hayesian, that's Hayesian, right. there you go. Commissioner Jacobs. I commented last week, I'll comment again, um, on the KMOM, Kansas Mission of Mercy, um, activity of the free dental clinic going on out at the fairgrounds. Um, we have 509 people from Hayes and the surrounding area that are volunteering their time. For over, at this point, over 700 people will be given free dental services. As I understand it, they were already lining up this morning. I don't know if anybody's been out there, but they will be there all night. Um, the people of this community, Melissa and her team, Melissa Dixon and her team at CBB and all the work they've done and everybody that's joined with them, our dental community, <coughs> uh, dental assistants, dental nurses, it's just an amazing thing to sit back and watch. They needed 400 volunteers. They got 509 and had to cut it off. Mm -hmm. So I'm proud of our community and proud of uh, everybody that has anything to do with this event. Mr. Measel. She took the words out of my mouth. I, kudos <laughs> what you said. Thank you to all the volunteers. Mr. Burgess. I was alluded to at the beginning of the meeting, uh, 27th Street construction starts on the 28th, so Monday. Mm -hmm. So prepare to alter your route to and from work and everywhere to avoid 27th for the next 12 weeks. But it, it should look nice when it's all done, and that's kind of the start of construction season everywhere. So kind of pay attention to updates on street projects. Yep. Uh, before I came to the meeting tonight, I kind of gave a quick welcome to the volunteers and whatnot out, out at the Hilton for the K-Mom Dental cl Clinic. There's a lot of a lot of good people out there that are doing this, that literally out of the kindness of their hearts. Um, so it's it's an amazing opportunity for people to get involved with that, and it's, it shows how really, uh, how much most of the people in Kansas care about each other. It's a, it's a good, good thing to have. Um, I also had a, I just lost my train of thought. I was just so excited about about that. It's, You're me, we'll wait. It is. <laughs> I think, I think or maybe it's lack of food or I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's really all I, all I have. It's It was good to have uh, all those people here in town. They're, they're good people. Uh, also, like I said, I continue to do, make sure you get out and register to vote. Um, there's a vote coming up on May 10th, so please get out, register, and go make yourselves informed. There was a good turnout for the bond uh, open house on what was that Tuesday night. Um, there's a lot of good, a lot of good conversation and information there. So please go check that out. Get yourselves informed. Get registered to vote, and the voting is on May 10th. Any executive sessions? Uh, no, but just a reminder: the next week's the fifth Thursday, so enjoy the week off. Oh, darn! Hey, all right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then we will adjourn at seven twenty-three.